Welcome to your Journey to Joy podcast. I'm your host, Moira Gorski, and I'm on a mission to help you find joy in the chaos of life. As a retired nurse, multi-passionate entrepreneur, and mom of four adult children, I know what it's like to feel the overwhelm of it all and wonder if and when the joy will show up again. And I've learned it's up to us to go find that joy. On this show, you will hear inspiring stories from those who have overcome all kinds of life challenges, tips on how to stay healthy and vibrant during the ups and downs of life, and simple ways on finding joy in your own life. Let's face it, life is messy, yet when we travel together on this journey, support and encourage each other along the way, that joy starts to show up again. I'm so excited to lead you on this journey of you to find the joyful life that you deserve. Well, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am your host, Moira Gorski. I'm so glad you are back here listening or just joining me for the first time. I welcome you. I wanted to get on here today and give you a little bit of update on my life. For those of you that have been following me for a while, or even just recently, you know that I recently moved. And moving is not for the faint of heart. And I just wanted to share some things that I've learned during this move. We lived in, I lived in the Midwest, and I live in a, lived in a town called Wheaton, lived in that community for 30 years. We got married in Chicago, lived in the Chicago, in Chicago for a year, and then moved out to the western suburbs. And so have lived there for a couple, in a couple of different houses for 30 years. And the house that we were moving from, we lived there for 25 years. Beautiful home, raised our family there, got involved in the community and all of that. And we decided to move, (laughs) that it was time to downsize. Our daughter is 25 and she is still living with us as she continues to work on not living with us, but she was going to move with us. But really, yeah, my husband's been saying, oh, I want to move out of, he wanted to move out of Wheaton, but I just, I wasn't ready. But when I got my cancer diagnosis in October, I went away in November, right before Thanksgiving, for a few days by myself, a few days of reflection and just sitting quietly and journaling and trying to figure out what just happened and how I wanted to handle things. And it was so evident to me when I was up there, I was in Michigan, at a friend of mine's home that I stayed at by myself, I, it was so evident to me that it was time to move. It was time to, it really came clear to me that I needed to figure out where the cancer was in my life and to put things behind me that no longer served me. And I'm not saying that our house didn't serve us and that it was a cancer in our life because it certainly wasn't. Again, it was a lovely home. It really served us well, but it was time to it was time to move on. It really, it was time to let go. It was time to really look at getting a fresh start, balancing some things out in my life, decreasing stress. And I just, and part of that was, I mean, I came home and told Tom, I said, I'm ready to move. I'm ready to sell the house. I'm ready to clean it out and to sell it. And that's what we did. And it, you know, as I as I thought about things and started to consider the home that we had been at for 25 years, you know, I, if you listen to me, I, you know, that I'm all about gratitude and being positive and working on being present today. And I didn't want to look at it as a negative thing. I wanted to first say, you know what, this house served us very well. And it did. We moved there when we had we had just had our, our daughter, our third child. We kind of grew out of our previous house. And it was time to get a larger home and move to a neighborhood and where we were going to have the kids start in their school and, again, get involved and all that kind of stuff. And that's what we did. And then we had a fourth child and we filled up the house with, you know, the four bedrooms and two and a half baths. We filled it all up. I had some wonderful memories there. And we had some not so good memories there. I don't know if you can feel me on that one, but everything didn't go super great. We had struggles with our daughter. We had struggles with my marriage, struggle with my kids. Just there was some, there was some memory stuck there that I was happy to get rid of and to happy to put behind me. 
and and everywhere in between, the good, the bad, and everything in between. So it really it really started there for me. Like I wanted to be grateful for for that home, and um, and I was. I was grateful that when I moved there, I was just beginning my business and kind of peeking into what the idea of having, being an entrepreneur was all about. And that home served me well with having meetings, having in-home events, if you will, having meetings with my growing team, having wonderful celebrations around the pool. It was really, really wonderful for my business. I really got involved with the community. I networked. I met different small businesses. I met different people. I was able to, again, have events and and parties in my home and demos and things like that. And it really was lovely. I was grateful for that. Grateful that we were able to raise our family there, live in a great suburb that the kids went to school, got a good education, got involved in different things and sports and things like that in the community. And it was great for our family. I have great memories of our family there, the house filled with love, lots of family birthdays and holidays and, you know, all the things around the table and the Christmas tree and the put a lot of We did some changes to the house and really made it our home that was warm and inviting and really served us. And so I was grateful for that. And it was time to close that chapter. And that's what we did. We decided to close that chapter of our life and find a new place to live. And it is not for the faint of heart, (laughs) I'm telling you, to move from a place that is, well, what ended up happening is we put our house on the market. We wanted to see how much it would sell for, to see how much money we would have to buy another home. And we were really intent on paying cash for our house. So, and we had a little debt to pay off. So we really wanted to see, again, how much money we had so that we knew how much money we had to play with, if you will, or to use to invest in our next home. So we started to look around in the neighboring areas And I don't know, this is 2024. It's a wild, wild west out there with real estate. There's not a whole lot available. Things become available and then they're not. Or they're just, I found that there were things that they looked totally different online than they did in person. So we started to, I didn't get worried, but I really was, what what I was what I was saying out loud and saying in my prayers and saying in my meditation that it was all going to work out. And then I was really drawn to this area of Geneva, which is about 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes west of where we lived. It's a beautiful community, really nice, quaint little town, but just a great community. We would come out here and go for dinner every once in a while. I'd go meet for coffee with people out here. But I was really drawn to Geneva. And I just kept saying, you know, it's all going to work out. It's just going to be smooth. We're going to sell the house. We're going to find the house. We're going to move. And you know what? Lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. We sold our house in less than a week. We found lovely buyers who just really fell in love with our house, even though there was lots of work to be done in there. And they really wanted to make it their their own. They, The wife was from the Wheaton area. She wanted to get back there. They have one daughter, and they just were excited to come in and make our home their home and fill it with their memories. And I was so grateful to be able to sell it to them and to really say, hey, here you go. We Here's the home. And what's interesting about the selling process is, you know, they encourage you, the realtors encourage you to neutralize your house, right? So we recarpeted it. We painted it all one color, like Dove White, I think was the name of it. And we took paintings off the wall. We just neutralized it. And you know what happened is that it, because for a while there, I was like, oh, I'm going to miss this house. And wow, this is, again, great memories and all that. But you know, when you do that, you neutralize your house, it pretty much neutralizes it. And it really wasn't our home anymore. It was a home that we were selling, but it took that, it took that person, personality out of it. And, you know, that's what you're supposed to do, right? So the buyers can come in and see how they can put their spin on it, their personality on it and change some things or keep it the same or whatever. And so that really is what happened. So it really wasn't difficult to say, yeah, I'm ready to put this behind me and to move on to the next place. And again, that's what we did two weeks ago. Um, almost well, about two and a half weeks ago, we moved into this home. Now we went from a home of 3,100 square feet 
to a little less than 1,600 square feet. <laughs> so um, think about that. I mean, we had so much, and this is what I want to talk a little bit about on this too, is that we had so much to get rid of. And it was so evident to me that we, and I know that I've known this for a long time, and I think you guys can probably relate. Like we live in a world of excess. Uh, we just have a lot. We have, we have a lot, and I'm so grateful for that. But we have too much. We have more than enough. And that's really lovely. But then you have to start to go through it. And you're like, wow, I don't need, again, I looked at it as I don't need these serving platters anymore. I don't need all of these bowls. I don't need all of these glasses. I don't need all of these things because I'm not going to be entertaining like I did before, not to the extent. And if I need to entertain someplace with a very large group, then I'll go to a local restaurant or something like that. But it was time to, you know, get rid of that excess. And, and again, it was so evident that me, to me that like, even though I didn't think that we held on to too many things, we held on to a lot of things. And we, I ended up getting rid of things, throwing things out, donating, selling, all of those things. And a friend of mine said something to me once. She goes, oh, isn't that really hard? I said, listen, I mean, we did it in a couple of phases. We did it once before we were putting the house on the market because we needed to neutralize it all, right? And we had to, you know, declutter it and all that. So we did a good amount of that before we put it on the market and staged our furniture and, and things like that. And they brought in some some items and staged it around. So we did it once. And then... Once we found the house that we're moving into and we knew how much space we had, then it was time for another one. And we ended up giving things away. And I just, I told this friend of mine, I said, I'm just not attached to things. You know, what I've grown to know in 60 years of my life is that it's nice to have, it's nice to have nice things, but I appreciate my health. I appreciate my time that I spend with my friends and my family. And I appreciate those memories. And for me, that's what's most important. It's not the stuff. It's not the stuff that, you know, I mean, again, everybody has different opinions of this. But our kids, you know, we have four kids. So we had four bins of, you know, each one had their bin of things. You know, their artwork and all that kind of stuff. And we spent time with the kids either on the phone or with a picture or when they came home. And we went through those bins. And I just said, hey, do you want this stuff? And a lot of times they took a few things and then the rest, they were like, we don't want. We laughed about it. We look, We laughed about all of the matching, you know, nutcracker pictures that they drew at Christmas time and the ceramic fish and all that kind of stuff. And then they're like, yeah, I don't really want it. I mean, they've gone on to establish their own lives and they don't want those kind of things. And so it really helped to not be attached to those things and say, you know what, this time has passed. This thing's time has passed and we're just going to give it away, throw it away. Um, gifted. It felt good to be able to gift it to people and that people would pick the stuff up and they're like, oh, I'm so excited for this. I'm like, here, have it. You know, I'm so glad that you're excited to use my thing that I don't really need anymore. Um, it was kind of heartbreaking that like my beautiful dining room table that had two leaves and, you know, eight chairs and a beautiful china cabinet. Nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted to buy it. Nobody wanted to consign it. So thankfully, I was able to donate it and somebody came and picked it up. And so somebody else is going to use that. So it's, it's hard because you're like, man, I spent lots of money on that. But it, nobody wants it anymore. You know, good dishes, collector's dishes that I had for my mother. Nobody wants it anymore. So I did a lot of donating of that. And, and here I am today sitting in my new office. I love it. I love our new home. I love the vibe of it. I love the vibe of the community. We moved to a, a boulevard that really is a nice, older, established neighborhood. We do back up to the high school, to a parking lot of the high school. And I kind of like that. There's some energy because school's going to start next week. I've heard the marching band practice this week. That's really cool. I was in the marching band and so was our daughter. So that brings back great memories. But it's just, it's so neat and I'm so happy and I have to say I feel like I'm on vacation <laughs> I still feel like I'm on vacation and it I think it's going to take a while to really know that this is 
you know, our home and, you know, our forever home for the next few years. My husband thinks, oh, maybe we're going to move in two years. I'm like, listen, honey, I'm not moving for, I'm not moving for a little while. But again, we moved to a smaller place. One of my friends said to me, it's okay. When you downsize, when you move smaller, your life can become bigger. We were able to pay cash for this house, so we don't have that monthly burden. So we'll have more room financially to travel and to do other things. I loved that when she said that. And again, we don't, I didn't have the attachments to a lot of things and whatnot. So I was able to give those away. And many people have said, like, if you look at something as you're cleaning out your, you know, cleaning out your bedroom or you're cleaning out your downstairs or something take a look at the things and people say oh does it bring you joy I mean you can think about that does this item bring me joy I thought about that and I did a lot of like reflecting back and like wow this did bring me joy this served for this purpose but um do I want to take it to the next place Mm, no or yes I think I do want to take it but that's a really good exercise to do is to look at things and say does this really bring me joy and if not It's okay to give it away, to gift it to somebody else and that kind of thing. So I just have a few things as I want to kind of wrap up what I'm saying here for my, for my update. And I'm glad that you're listening. And I just, I really, it's, it was such a learning experience. It was one of the most stressful times of my life. I will say that. And people say that it's moving is very, very stressful, kind of like getting married and having a kid. And I, I definitely I definitely agree with that. And we're through it all. And I've gotten a massage (laughs) and I've done some sound healing baths and things like that. And I feel like I've just, again, physically, mentally, spiritually put so many things behind me. I feel lighter. I feel more open to what's coming. I feel more open to a fresh start. And it was just that letting go of things. And so I want to, so I wanted to just again wrap up today by saying for, to you guys a couple of things that I want to share and I want to encourage you to think about. Number one, what are you holding on to? Like, think about that. Like many times we, the beginning of the year, we, you know, make New Year's resolutions or we clean out closets or we do spring cleaning or whatever. I encourage you to look around and like, what are you holding on to? And Spend some time thinking about that. And do you want to hold on to that? I mean, we're 60 years old. We're in good health. I'm glad that we did this big major purge at this age when we could do that. There was a lot of moving around and boxes and throwing things away and hauling things away. So I encourage you to do it now. Like start, even if it's just one room, like take a look and say, what are you holding on to? And kind of spend some time thinking about that because we hold on to things. We give meaning to things. And many times when we clutter up our lives, when we clutter up our minds, when we clutter up our areas, we're blocking ourselves from having other things come into our life. So when we hold on to things, again, we don't give the universe, God, spirit, a chance to send us new things because there's too much around us. If it's physical stuff, if it's mental clutter and things like that. So I encourage you to think about what are you holding on to? And if you need help getting through your house or getting through a room, then grab a friend or call a professional. There are professional organizers. There are people that will come as a neutral third party, if you will, and they'll help you clean through your things. It is a lot of work. My sister's uh, new boy, new husband had parents who were really close to hoarders. And he's been working almost this last year, probably even longer, to clean out their house because they both passed. And it's a lot of work. And um, it's just a lot of work. So I say, what do you hold, think about what are you holding on to? And, and I encourage you to start to, to get rid of that stuff. And think about that. Number two, this is what I've started to do because I'm new in the area. And I'm saying hello to people. 
I go into shops or I go to the yoga studio and I say, oh, I'm, I'm on a free pass this week because I'm new. And I say hello. And, you know, I have found that so many people in this world, I don't know where you live, but they don't say hello. They have their eyes down. They're looking at their phones. They don't say hello. And, you know, it's say, just take it as an excuse to say, I mean, I'm just saying, hey, because I want to get to know people. I want to get to know the area. And so I'm saying hello. And I'm saying, yeah, I just moved here. You know, I take Ruby for a walk and I meet somebody at the park and I'm like, oh, hi, I'm Moira. I said, I just moved here. And so I say hello and the dogs meet and I meet them and I've, I got some new friends all of a sudden, but it's so nice to just do that. Just say, slow down enough to say hello to somebody. Even if you've lived in your town, I bet there's stores that you can go in. Maybe you can go to the library. Maybe you can go see a show. Maybe you can just go walk in your park and, and make it a point to say hello to people. People will say hello if you say hello. Most will. But it's a time to, again, get to know somebody. Spread some cheer. Spread some joy around by just, um, just saying hello. I mean, I have a intention of checking out the shops because I love to shop and I love to support small businesses. And I knew all of them in Wheaton and Glen Ellen. I don't know them out here in Geneva. So I'm going into the shops during the week and um, I'm walking there or I'm going, meeting somebody at, and I'm checking it out and I'm saying, Hey, tell me about your shop and tell me about what you do. And wow, this is cool. Where do you get these cool crystals? Where do you get these clothes or whatever, slow down enough to go and check things out and kind of act like you're a newbie or just say, hey, I've never really checked out your shop, even though I've lived in this community for 20 years. I want to get to know you and support you, that kind of thing. So say hello. That's what I say. And, you know, check out clubs. I just joined the women's club here. I got my library card. I'm checking out different businesses in the area. I joined a health club in this area. I'm found a place to get my nails done. I'm going to get my hair cut at a new place tomorrow. I'm just getting involved. I want to get involved in the community. I want to get to know them. And I encourage you to do the same thing. If you haven't done that, like it just can make your life so much brighter when we can support each other. And that means going in and just saying hello or, you know, posting something on Facebook in your community group and saying, hey, I'm looking for a walking partner, or I'm looking for a new place to take my dog to, or a new place to get a massage. And people want to help each other. So I say that. Um, And number three, slow down and, you know, be grateful. Slow down and be grateful for what you do have. We are in a world of busy. We are in a world that It's like we get a badge for being busy. We get a badge for being having our full life, which a full calendar and all of that. And albeit we find success, we find all of these great things, there is something to be said about slowing down and having an afternoon maybe that you sit on your new front porch and you read a book or just taking a nap, or just going for a walk with your dog, I just encourage you to slow down and be grateful for what you have. Again, it was so busy for a couple of months around here, and now I feel like I'm taking a breath. And I know that that stress wasn't good for me, and I know that it was short-lived, but now I'm like working intentionally on slowing down, doing things that really nourish me, and us taking something off the calendar and saying no to something and maybe taking a walk downtown instead of driving to some networking event, that's better serving to me. And I encourage you to think about that. I mean, we have the opportunity to rewrite our story. We don't have to move, but you can move. You can move like we did. But, and so we're, I don't know if I'm rewriting my story, but I'm writing a new one. I'm starting a new chapter of my life with myself, with my business, with my husband, with our dog. I'm starting a new chapter. And you have the opportunity to do that too. You can rewrite it. You can say, oh, I I am just, oh my gosh, we have so much stuff in this house and I could never move because, you know, I'm I'm staying here because it's so, I'm just so cluttered and all that. You can keep saying that or you can say, but you know, today 
I'm going to start and I'm going to do a little bit. You can rewrite that story. You don't have to say, oh, I could never move or I could never, I'm too scared to go to a new community. I don't want to downsize my kid. I want to, I want, (laughs) my husband kept saying, well, what about all those people that you have over and like the meetings that you have? And what about when our kids come to visit? I'm like, well, we still have room in our house to have people over and we still have room in our house to have our kids come and it'll be a little crowded when they come to visit. But how often do they come to visit? Maybe once or twice a year, unfortunately, but we'll find space for them. And I don't want to make that an excuse. Like we still have, we still have room, but I didn't want to let that stop us from buying this cute little home for this next chapter of our life because we, because we needed extra room. We don't like, again, we can, you can rewrite the next chapter. You can change the next chapter of your life. You have the ability to do that. We all do. And I encourage you to think about that. It may be feel tough at times. And I've talked to people about it and they're like, oh, I don't know if I... you can. Sometimes you need a little bit of a pep talk from a friend. You need a little bit of help. I had a friend who said, anytime I can come over and I can help you purge through things. We'll turn on the music and, you know, pour ourselves a drink and, you know, do all of that stuff. So I encourage you to think about that, that you can, you can rewrite your story. It doesn't have to be the same thing. There are things that happened to us. There's things that happened to me this last nine months, almost a year, um, because I'm in August and I went to the doctor in September and that's when things started to happen with, you know, my, my wake up call. And so I took that wake up call as an opportunity to take a look around to take a look around and see what do I need to get rid of? What resentments do I need to get rid of? What things do I really need to look at and open my eyes to and realize that, okay, this isn't serving me. This I don't want in my life anymore and get rid of it. And so that wake up call served me very well. And I'm just really grateful that I'm sitting here almost a year later in a new place. And I'm excited for this new flow new people, new opportunities, and just a new, it's like a new story right in front of me. And so I encourage you to think about the things that I shared with you today on this podcast. What can you take today and start to think about? And if you're not sure, you know, what I always say is pick up a journal, pick up, open a notebook and start writing about what would you like, what would you like, what will you like your life to be like a year from now? What do you feel like, you know, use that as a prompt. If you could create a life different a year from now, what would you like it to be like? What do you, another prompt is, what do you feel like is getting in the way? You know, do you feel stuck? What are the things that you need to let go of? You know, how can you make a fresh start? And I encourage you to think about that. Spend some time with that and then make just take those, take those steps. And I can't wait to hear from you. I love when you share with me about listening to these podcasts and the things that encouraged you and encourage you to be more joyful and to make that step forward into a more joyful life. So thanks for listening. That's my update on my move. I am so grateful for all of you who have followed along social wise or, you know, text wise and things like that. I was at I went back to my old health club today because I have a couple of personal training sessions to finish up. And one gal's like, how are you enjoying your house? You know, we never know who's following us and watching us and stuff like that. But it's been lovely to have all the support of all of you guys. And again, I hope you got some value from this podcast and again, making moves, um, putting things behind us and just rewriting and creating a new story for yourself. So thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Make it a great, great day. Hey there, ready to live a more joyful life? Considering connecting with someone who can help you? If so, I'd like to be that person. I offer a free consultation where we determine where the chaos is in your life and how you can learn to bring more joy each and every day. Visit my website, moiragorski.com, or simply email me, moira at moiragorski.com, with more joy in the subject line. I look forward to connecting. And I'm here to say, there will always be some chaos, which requires a little juggling, but you can find joy and live your life intentionally filled with that joy. Let me help you on your journey to joy. And that's joy, the journey of you.